live late break. We're local live and late breaking here on the Camo Dave News Channel. How are you doing? Happy 4th. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. How's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's get our little uh, music playing, intro music. Good morning, everybody. It's the 4th of July. Wow, a beautiful day here in uh, Western North Carolina. Hey, Shimei. Hey, Noreen. Hey, Tim. Tim from Ohio. How's the weather in Ohio? I was uh, first before Shimei. You, I don't know, Noreen. You can, technically, you're second, according to the uh, according to the uh, stats here on the uh, chat. You can, you, you know, maybe your maybe Shimei has a little faster internet than you do. So her, she got here just a fraction of a second before you. Happy Fourth of July, RV Butterfly. The Doxinator is here. What is he wearing? The white. He's waving the white flag of surrender. Is that what that is? What is <laughs> the white flag of surrender? <laughs> hey, Metal Kitty, how are you doing? Shatter King 215 Philadelphia, PA. That's right. Hey, Noreen, uh, my screen showed I was first. I missed it. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll have to get to figure out what YouTube, what's going on with YouTube anyway. So how's everybody doing this morning? Uh, yeah, the, you got my uh, got the last of my hers sour cream potato chips here. I didn't have any uh, breakfast this morning, so I thought I'd just have some chips for breakfast. Mmm, man, I love these. Letters, letters, letters. We're going to have a um, about ten thirty Eastern time, about an hour. We'll take a few phone calls on the hotline. That was a good idea the doctor had. He said, he said, um, make the last half hour the phone call hour. So we got the hotline here. And uh, don't call now, call in a little while, and I'll answer a few phone calls. Now, the problem is, I didn't think of this, these are very greasy potato chips. And now I'm doing my touch screen here with greasy fingers. So I'm just going to make the screen all greasy. <laughs> That's right, Philadelphia. I love area codes. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I said that I'm a kind of a license plate freak. I love license plates and I'm fascinated by trivia like that. And I'm also fascinated with area codes. You know, they have the overlay area codes now. So one area can have two area codes. Northern Virginia, it's either 703 or 5571. Five, you know, it just depends which one. And some people like the older area code, the 703. And they, uh, please subscribe. That's right. I'm trying to get up to 11,000 subscribers and we're almost there. I was hoping by the 4th of July to get up to 11,000 subs. And there were like uh, 10, 9, 49 or something like that. So, that's right. Al in uh, Tennessee made this shirt. He made me a whole bunch of uh, Halloween hol holiday themed shirts. I have a Halloween one. I have a Valentine's Day one. Um, there's a, um, a whole bunch of Christmas. This is a, there's a Christmas one. A wee and a Santa hat. And I always forget to wear them. I'm like, plus the last couple of years I've had a lot of my storage stuff put away in the storage locker. So this year it's all here in the apartment. So. I got him. So uh, this is the uh, one he made for the 4th of July. So I love it. Thank you. Al. I haven't heard from Al in Tennessee lately. Uh, he gave me a, an Easter one where I'm dressed up like a bunny. So anyway, happy 4th, all you Americans. I know. I'm, I'm, it's just weird. Somebody was sending me some clips from Canadian television news and it's like people are really upset when Americans come up now. You're allowed to go to Canada if it's for essential travel. Okay, so Americans can cross the border to Canada if it's essential. If there's like 
I guess, a relative who's sick or something, or there's a business thing you have to do, or the other essential thing is to travel to Alaska. You are allowed to enter Canada if, if you know, need to drive through to go to Alaska, because other than that, how do you get to Alaska? Well, you can fly or take a boat, but, you know, if you want to drive to Alaska, you're allowed to go, but you're not allowed to do any touristy things or, you know, they can't, they find you like in certain towns that are off the main road there, you can get in big trouble, get like $1,200 fines. So these people in um, Canada, some of these small towns up there in British Columbia are really upset because they're seeing like Washington state plates, you know, in some of the touristy areas and they're seeing Americans in some of the hiking zones and they're really upset about it. You know, get the hell out of our country. We're working hard to, uh, Stop the V and uh, all you folks are just bring, bringing it over. Like, And they don't even wear masks. The Americans come over and don't even wear masks. Are we doing fireworks? Um, the town is, yes. Town of Morganton is doing fireworks today. I think tonight at like 940. And, um, but you cannot go to the park where they're shooting off the fireworks. You have to. Watch them from your car, and they have several designated parking lots around town where you can see them. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, what? What? F you, Dave, I'm out. We'll watch later. All right, Metal Kitty, you can watch the replay, but that'll cost you. The re I'm going to put the, re the replay on my Patreon page, and it'll cost you $10. All right. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. Two Brians, Brian McKinnon and Brian For Forrest. What's up? Hey, the Bronx gummo dude. Sherman. <laughs> he called her Sherman. He had that. I love autocorrect, don't you? Sherman. Nice to see you here, Sherman. <laughs> well, you know, she could. I don't know. People change their names. They go from. Well, this to that, you never know. Sherman, maybe. <laughs> what was that? What was that cartoon with Sherman? You remember that cartoon? That little smart kid, and it was like a dog and Sherman. I, I you know, vague. Hey, I'm Oklahoma geezer life. Good morning, the Shermanator. Yeah. <laughs> Gummo, you're going to rehab on the Vegas Strip, huh? It's a good place to do it. I was enjoying watching Rosie there playing the slot machines there. She has a way. She said she has a way of winning. <laughs> and she knows when she's ahead. You know, she'll get ahead by a couple hundred bucks, and then she stops and walks away. She doesn't just keep doing it. She's very logical about it. I, I was enjoying that. D-Dub there. Now, D-Dub didn't take his channel down. D-Dub said he was getting off of YouTube, getting off of YouTube because – the trolls were bothering him and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to get into all that. You can go watch his. He still has his Why I'm Leaving YouTube video up. But he still has like three or four videos still up on his channel. So his channel is still there. Which kind of, if you, listen, if you're going to say I'm quitting YouTube goodbye and you don't take your channel down, I don't believe you, okay? There are so many people that say that I'm quitting YouTube goodbye. F, F you, I'm out. You know, I, we hear that all the time. And then their channels remain up. And then weeks go by. I, I still think D Dub's going to continue posting stuff. If, you know, if he was really serious about his uh, getting off of YouTube, he'd just take the channel and turn it off. Uh, putting everything in private doesn't count. You know, videos going away, but your channel's still there doesn't count. I still think you're going to come back. And I've said that a couple times. There was a couple years ago when I was really down on YouTube and I was getting strikes on my channel and people were fighting. And I was just, I was very close to just saying, I'm daddy, I F you, I'm out. But I didn't, I did kind of do a video where I said kind of, I'm, re I'm really sick of YouTube. I'm getting ready to go. But then the next morning I woke up and said, I love YouTube and I have to keep going. <laughs> there, B in Athens is here. How you doing? B adopted a, a, a kitty. She got a kitty, a really cute little kitty. So she's got a couple cats there with her. So uh, she's uh, enjoying that. I always mix up Dave 2D and D-Dub. Really? Uh, no, I've never done that, Shatter King. 
Mm, these chips are so good. Somebody sent me. Who was that? I can't remember now. I, I hate when I I get a, a cool. Somebody sent me three of these bags of these chips, and they're so good. Sour cream and onion. I am. If I, there's an addiction, I'm really addicted. I gotta put these away. But I had to eat something for breakfast this morning. I've had no food today at all. That's right, Mr. Peep, the Peabody guy. Yeah. I used to watch that Sherman, and he would give like little lectures to the kid. The kid was like a little brainiac. And H. Lever, that's right. She's got a good, you've got a good memory, Sherman. <laughs> Oh, man. This is really indulgent. I, I do not buy potato chips at the store because I'm so addicted to them. And I that's what I, I'll just, in the evening, I'll just get a bag and start eating them. And then, if you know, they're good for a few bites. And then you start to feel like, oh, I didn't eat all those chips. Really? No, I just checked it. That's funny. I was just this morning checking around on his channel. And it popped up. I don't know. Maybe he took it down. I just, let me see. D, Dub. I think it's D, Dub Travels, isn't it? He's still there. It's D, Dub, not Dubs. D, Dub Travels. He is still up. Or maybe he, you know, he's got uh, four videos. Up. I'm quitting YouTube. Um, yeah, he's still got four videos up. He's still up. D, Dub no S. Maybe it would, couldn't find D-Dub's travels. He's still at 118 subs, which is way down from where he was. I don't know. Maybe he changed the channel. And I don't know. That's what pops up when I look for him. You know what? It's a new channel because I'm not yeah, – I'm subscribed to D-Dub, and this one, I'm not subscribed to him. So he, he must have taken his old channel down and put a new one up. Okay, that's what he did. Because, uh, yeah, I, I would be subscribed to it if it was the old channel just renamed. Well, yeah, this has lasted me, I think, three or four days, actually. I'm, I'm very good. One more. Um, now my hands are all greasy. Betty Smith. Oh, I was looking at that hobo shoestring guy. He's apparently having some health issues. He was up in Alaska. I guess he took a train down to Minnesota. He was there in St. Paul, and then he's going to head down to Tennessee and recuperate. He's not feeling well. He's got a bunch of issues, health issues. He had, remember, he's the guy who got the Cairo glasses. Anyway, let me see. I'll get caught up on people I might have missed. Sean Quinn, nice to see you. Debbie Griffin, happy 4th of July. Love the Cape CC, Tasmod. Sven Gulli, Dracula, and Billy the Kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. D -dub, it's now D Dub Travels, no S, well, at, at, after dubs. D Dub Travels, new channel. Then he's got 118 subs. So he's still on YouTube. He just got rid of the old channel, started over. He had uh, jo set up one of those join button things and he was really trying to hype his channel. I don't know. I'm noticing, I have been noticing, I I did post on my community page on Kim O'Day this morning. I, I've got down to about 10 or 15 nomads that are the core of what I like to watch and how they do from month to month with their, with their channels. And uh, most of them are down quite a bit, you know, and Eric Nomadic Fanatics views are down substantially. I don't know. Um, Carol's Army Life is up a tad. Van City Van Life is actually doing pretty well. I again, I think if you, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Again, you got to be real careful about making cha changes in your channel. You know, even you know, let's say Carol's Army Life. He actually, she went up a percent or so, but even still, she's got to be careful about the politics in there because you talk politics, you talk religion. All you're going to do is make some people mad at you, and then some of them are going to unsub. Yeah, it's D Dub Travels, and it's a new channel. It's you know, so you have, if you were sub to him, you have to resub. But he was here last week, and I don't see him on the chat this morning. But it is still 
He's hanging out with Rosie there, I think, in Vegas now. So if he was up probably late last night, he's probably still sleeping in. Bubba Booey. <laughs> hey, Brian. Howard Stern. Anybody listen to Howard Stern anymore, man? I gave up on him a long time ago. I think he jumped the shark when he went to satellite radio. Yeah, I liked him many as a – yeah, Christine, I – no matter fanatic, I don't know. He's gotten. Uh, I think a lot of people are complaining. You know, the house and all that. I don't. I, I still do not understand why he bought that house. You know, I can understand nomads wanting to have a base of operations. You know, now in this day and age, I can certainly understand that. But Eric does not like. You know, he likes cool weather. He doesn't like hot stick. You know, what do you? What is Illinois weather? It's a lot of thunderstorms in the summer. It's sticky and hot and humid. It goes up in the 90s, the Midwest, you know, Eastern Midwest there. The winter is cold. They get snow, ice storms. I mean, it's not the best climate in the world. If you're going to buy a house, there's certainly, I would think, if I was, if I just had to look at the whole country and go, I have to pick a place to get a house, you know, I certainly wouldn't pick, you know, I'm not putting down Illinois. I think there's a lot of cool things in Illinois. It's a nice state but i think i could pick some better climates than that <laughs> yeah i don't i don't do that i do not pay for radio i was reading a lot of things and and the television stuff uh, youtube tv going up they're raising it from 50 to 65 dollars that's you that's the service where you get like a cable service over the it's called over the top through your internet and i think a lot of people that subscribe to youtube tv are cord cutters that cut their cable service, but now the stupid YouTube TV is getting to be as expensive as their cable was. I really think they're going to be sorry they did that. I think they're going to lose a lot. I really think a lot of people are going to drop it. You know, you've got to be price. The problem is these cord cutter people are price conscious and to jack up a service fit. You know, somebody said that in like little over a year and a half, they've gone from $35 a month to $65 a month. That's like, uh, you know, doubling the price in little more than a year. You know, you don't do that kind of thing. If you want to get subscribers, you don't double your price in a little more than a year. You know, and I'll tell you, most of these cable channels are garbage. Senior survival and preparedness. You're the, are you the, oh, damn. You are the guy, you, you, I mean, you're the guy, the gal. You, you sent me that uh, that wonderful, oh, I got, you know, I got to get that out of, I'm still working on it. The, um, the, um, the, the car battery charger jump starter, right? The car battery jump starter, the camo car battery jump starter. I got that in the mail, I guess about Wednesday is really cool. And I believe it's you guys, cause you were, you were hinting that something big in camo was coming in the mail. But uh, I want to get a confirmation that you guys sent it because that is so cool. I really love it. You're more of an Opie and Anthony guy, huh? Yeah, I, I remember them. I used to like to watch, listen to them. Then they got big fights and they split up Opie and Anthony. Eric bought a house because money burns a hole in his pocket. Yeah, I miss, I never liked Dimas. I'm still made at Nomadic Fanatic for using Angela M to get a show. Yeah. <laughs> Howard Stern was never a conservative, okay? He was fairly liberal on a lot of his politics, even though he made a lot of jokes. And even though he did, you know, he was he had Donald Trump on his show a couple of times, but Donald wasn't terribly political back then. Donald hung around with the Clintons and he'd hang around with he'd hang around with anybody who would be favorable to his business stuff. And I never ever thought of Donald Trump as being a terribly political guy. You know, when you look at, you know, back in the 90s when Howard Stern was doing his radio show, you know, Trump would go on. You know, they were funny. They were funny together. And and you never thought of Trump as being a conservative politician. He just wasn't, you know, and it's just it's weird to see him now as president because he's so different than he used to be. You pirate Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I liked him when he was on the radio and he was always fighting with people that were at his radio station and he was fighting you that feud with Imus. But today, I'm, you know, I listen. I know Doxy has satellite radio and Doxy does have Howard on the uh, radio over there. Is Doxy still here? Hello, Doxy. Are you? I'm just checking. We're doing a Doxy check. Have you uh, 
Are you still here or are you uh, you gone away? He said, he now shows up at the beginning of my shows and then he just drifts away. And I said, that's okay because uh, I got uh, a lot of people moderating. I've got too many moderators. <laughs> Yeah, I, and again, I, I going back to Eric and nomadic, nomadic fanatic in the house. I don't know. I, I just first off, the climate in that area is not so great. I don't know. I, you know, I, he has his friend Sean that live that works at that audio place there, a car audio place there in uh, East Dalton, which is across the Mississippi from St. Louis. And I think he, you know, the reason that he located there is just to be near his friends. Okay. But other than that, I, I, you know, it's just more bills, right? He's got more bills now. He's got a security system. He's got internet. He's, well, I don't know what, you know, whatever utilities and taxes he's paying on that new house. And, you know, that's in addition to everything else that's going on. So I, I don't know, man. I just think he made his, there's more bills, you know, and he's not even living in the house full time. So, you know, why have a house if you're not going to at least stay in it most of the time, you know, I mean, it's like me you're paying rent here, but if I was on the road 90% of the time, I'd be, you know, why am I paying rent for a place and I'm only living in 10 or 15% of the time. Ain't seen no doxy this morning, just the wrenches. I thought I saw Craigie Pooh here earlier, but maybe I was just hallucinating. Yeah, I think so. I you know. I I told him. He said. He said. Oh, your Saturdays are really bumming me out. There's you're on so much, you know, because I do have the two chats and stuff. And I told him. I said, look, you just do what you want. I and I, that's my with my mods. I just say, if you want to be here, it's great. If you don't, if you're busy, you've got other things to do. That's great. I have no problem with that. You know, there's no requirement. <laughs> He's on strike. He's <laughs> he protest. He's got a picket sign out front. <laughs> 80s vids for Dave loves his liberals you know what I'll be honest with you I'm much more of a libertarian than anything else as people know I have a lot of friends who are conservatives and I enjoy listening to their what they have to say you know if, if you're if your views are thought out there's logic behind them, and they, you know, you, there's some intellect there. I get it. I understand where people come from on different political spectrums. And the other thing that I also find out when I talk to people is very few people are 100% anything. I mean, I talk to conservatives who have some liberal views. I mean, some, everybody on, you know, when it comes from social things to fiscal things, to, you know, people are a big mix. Very, very few people are 100% conservative or 100% liberal. Everybody's somewhere in the middle. I know a lot of liberals who are very conservative on financial issues, and I know a lot of conservatives that are very liberal on social issues. You know, I mean, it's just everybody's a mix, and I really I get so tired of everybody stereotyping everybody. You know, oh, every oh, they all march in lockstep. They all believe this. Oh, all the liberals want this, and all the conservatives want that. I, I mean, really. <laughs> No, I, I honestly do. I can't drink any booze before, say, five o'clock. I can't because it just knocks me dead. I don't. Doxy and Rockford are off by themselves plotting evil. They probably are. The Jill, oh, you want to, oh, Ziggy wants a Jilly update. Yes, Jilly is doing fine. She's on meds. And so far, no need for surgery. The doctor, I think the vet said, if, you know, we're going to try to avoid surgery is because, you know, those those French bulldogs, English bulldogs, they have the flat faces and they're 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 it's harder to anesthetize a dog like that. And, you know, and bulldogs cross the breeds, you know, they're they're a very inbred dog and they have a lot of, uh, you know, medical issues. So, you know, we'd rather not, if we don't have to, give her anesthesia for us for back surgery. So they put her on meds. And so far, she's doing okay. She's, you know, walking around better. They, they have Craig's house has a big, he has, it, it has a sloping lot. So the front is up and the back is down. And when you go out on the back deck, on the, even on you're on the first floor, it's up on the second level. And uh, there's a big set of stairs that go down. And Jilly runs up and down those stairs a lot to get down to the backyard. And that's probably what's causing a lot of her back issues. So 
meds are helping so far, so they're going to keep her on that for a while and see how things go. But we have they haven't completely ruled out the surgery. Patreon people are his main source of income, brings in a lot of money. Uh, so I know a lot of YouTube creators who hype their Patreon. I don't, I guess I don't blame them at all. I'm not, you know, again, I've never, I do have a Patreon account, but I have never activated my Patreon. I don't want to do that. The more and more I think about it, the problem with Patreon is I think a lot of the people that become your Patreons, patrons, they, they, they think, you know, they, they feel obligated now to tell you what to do. You know, and then if they don't like a video, they just yank their, their I don't know. It's, I, it's, it's not, I just, I don't, I always cringe. I don't honestly don't think my content is good enough to have people pay for it. You know, you know, as they say, if you want to throw me some bucks on super chat, there's the little dollar sign. If you want to, uh, you know, uh, send me a few bucks on PayPal, you know, I, you know, my address there, but I really, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I just don't want to get into, you can only see this on Patreon. You know, Eric does those only on Patreon chats and I don't know. And I noticed that, you know, now we have, um, we have uh, Elvis doing those. You can only, you can see his chats, but you have to be subscribed. You have to have that little join thing in order. I, I don't like that. I just don't like that. I don't think my content is that good that I really want to put it behind a paywall. <laughs> Jilly did the back steps yesterday two times. All right. That's that's a good sign. That means she's feeling better. Really good. Subscribe star. I have never heard of subscribe star, Ziggy. Subscribe star. It's nearly midnight here. Free to travel. Oh, my. The 4th of July is already almost over. Conservative, liberal, right, and left, all four are different. Really? So liberals and leftists aren't the same? I don't, you know, all I know is that everybody is unique when you talk to the, you know, I, I you know, I, I just, I don't know. As long as your views are well thought out, I really don't have a problem with them. I can understand that, you know, it's the people that I just, you know, they're stereotypical, closed-minded people whether you be left or right or where, whatever, you know, I, those are the kind of people I just try to avoid, you know, I'm right. You're wrong. And that's it. You know, no, I don't, you know, I don't care who you are. And I have, I have liberal friends on Facebook that just bomb me every day with the same political things, you know, and I'm like, okay, they, they, some of them don't like Donald Trump and every single day they send out 20, you know, I don't like Donald Trump. Stuff and I, I get boys. I, I like I'm, I've unsubbed from them because I just I don't want that. I don't want to. I know I, you know you have a political view and you don't need to keep hitting me over the head with it. Boom, boom, boom every day, twenty times. I know what your views are. I respect your views, but I don't need you screaming and yelling every single day. You know, and I those people I just whether they be on the left or the right. If you're going to post just nothing but political crap. I'm going to just unsub because I, you know, I know what, I know what they think. I know what I think, you know, shut up. <laughs> Crotchy should have a Patreon, right? Should he? Yeah, I... yeah, there he is. He's back there with his glow, his glowing orb. <laughs> his glowing orb. Hey, Jeff Rock. Happy Saturday. Maybe YouTube will increase revenue share. No, no. YouTube, I, you know, I, I am noticing really severe declines in terms of YouTube income. I look at the social blade numbers on a lot of channels. Uh, you know, I know, you know, Matic Fanatic, people like that have taken a huge hit. Now, I do understand why they go to Patreon or PayPal or something like that. But, you know, I, I think, you know, that may be a short term little mini fix. But in the long run, you know, it's just changing. And that's the thing with this whole pandemic thing. All these companies now, they immediately, right? Oh, don't have to pay your bill. Don't pay your electric bill. You don't have to pay your rent. We're going to give you, you know, uh, a cash credit. We're going to do this. You know, it's like YouTube TV for a couple of weeks there during the early part of the pandemic. They actually added a few channels from Epics and stuff. Oh, we're going to give you free service for a little while. Everybody was just jumping on how wonderful we are, how wonderful we are. 
now a couple months have gone by and all these companies are now realizing, oh my God, we're losing all this money. So now all everybody's jacking up their prices, right? You go to the grocery store every day, it's a little more expensive. Gas prices are inching back up. YouTube now is, you know, oh, we've got to charge $15. That's a 30% rate hike for just a couple of stupid channels that nobody wants to watch, you know? And, uh, you know, okay, it's not, you know, just say goodbye, you know? They're, gonna, they're going to, I think, be, uh, be uh, quite upset about it. I mean, when they see, you know, they lose 25, 30% of their subscribers. You know, I have... Uh, I have an account with GoDaddy, which is this web server thing. And they, they used to be really super cheap and they were really nice. And they just keep jacking up the rates. Every every six months, the rates go up, you know, bang. And there's this is now $2 more. And, you know, and I just have really gone through and I said, you know what? I don't need their servers. I do have a couple web addresses, fuzzface.com with them, camopantshiker.com. And I'll keep those because I like, you know, but I've redirected those all to other servers that I pay for with somebody else. And they're not getting my money anymore. That, that monthly fee for that server space. I'm just saying, you know, it used to be $9.99. Now it was $10.99. And then they jacked it up to $12.99 with no announcement. They just do it. It's just more expensive. And I just said, you know, goodbye. And I think YouTube's going to have the same problem with their TV you know, it's just, and, you know, at and is raising their prices for their over-the-top service. And Hulu's raising their prices. And the reason people cut the cable is, first off, they don't want all these stupid channels, you know. When you watch cable TV and, you know, if you're like me, there's three or four channels. That's all you watch, you know. I mean, really, I don't want, I don't want 85 channels, you know, where I only watch four. Why do I want to pay for 85 channels when I'm watching three or four? You know, uh, <laughs> politics is a hate group now. YouTube is putting a lot of ads down here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Wacko's playing. Arlene, Arlen. Wacko's playing whack-a-mole with one's mind. They're very tedious to deal with. I love watching Caitlin Bennett interview Dems. They're brainwashed by MSM Mad Cow. Wow. My Hulu hasn't gone up in years. Well, good. <laughs> I don't know. Hulu, at least Hulu does offer tiers of service that you can pay more for things. Okay. There is a free version of Hulu, I think, or something isn't there. There's an ad. Oh, wow. Has my has my brain four hundred dollars? <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm like my eyes are my vision is wow. Thank you so much, SSP Senior Survival and Preparedness. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Wow. I'm, I'm choked up. I choked on my potato chip there. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is amazing. Thank you. 400. I was like, wait, that's 40, right? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Rockford, match that, Rockford. <laughs> I wish Rockford was on here doing one of his matchy things. Thank you so much. That is absolutely amazing. Wow. That's a record. Yeah, I think my previous record was 100. And I remember um, Denise, the Wandering Artist Lady, I think she went by the name Misty. Misty, what was her name? Misty something. Remember, Barb, we were driving up to uh, Sugar Land or the uh, Sugar Mountain there and Misty Woods, Misty Woods. And I remember she was she gave me two $100 donations when I was doing crotchy in the pool last year down in Orlando. Yeah, I need a drink. Whoa! Well, thank you so much, Senior Survival and Preparedness. You are the you you did you you are the guys that sent me the um the car charger thing, right? I'm pretty sure of it. Thank you. That is amazing. I was just gonna say, hey everybody, you want to pop over a couple bucks? 
There's my van rental. That's right. I'm going to rent a van. I should do that. Rent a van for the van build. Yeah. Wow. Spectrum sent out a, someone to interview me with his clipboard. I said, eliminate the commercials and lower the price $10 and I might come back. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. I've never seen $400 on a super chat. Now that could be a, uh, I'm sure, is that American money or is that Mexican? You see that sometimes on other people's chats where it'll say like 1,500 and then it's like North Norwegian kroners or Mexican pesos and then you do the conversion and it's like $28. Thank you, Lori. That's Lori, 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 Lori. Thank you so much, Lori. That is so very nice of you. Lori, female trucker, okay. Wow. Jeez. Thank you so much. I should, I will tip my mods. All my mods will get a, uh, a card <laughs> with gift cards in them. <laughs> I did. Senior survival and preparedness. Thank you so much. I can pay my rent now. That's right. That's U.S. dollars. <laughs> that is so nice of you. Thank you so much. Russell, speaking of Lori, another Lori. Did Blue Van Dan and Lori split up? I don't know. You know, they traveled together in separate vehicles going from Arizona all the way to Minnesota. I think Wisconsin is where she's from. And then he's kind of gone off on his own. So I don't know. I don't know if they were ever really together. And Ellen, you're out of here. Don't go, Alan. Don't go. <laughs> Ziggy with it. McDonald's gift cards to the mods. I will do that. That's a good idea. Was that your mom? No, I know. My mom passed away in 05. Mikey, they will, this will make Mikey cry. Yeah. Well, I think Mikey made like six, 600 on his last super chat, but, uh, you know, he had to, he had to really beg for it. It's like, oh, I'm only going to be on here another five minutes. I need 20 more dollars. Let's do it. A senior. Uh, let me see. I, let me see if I can get a, I can't. Yeah. Some, uh, Seniors, somebody put a link to Senior Survival and Preparedness's channel. The least we can do is do that. Um, I can't do that right here from where I am. I could look at it on this machine, but I cannot uh, copy and paste it on the Chromebook. Senior Survival and Preparedness. Let's see if I can punch that up here. Do, 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 do. There it is. Senior Survival and Preparedness, 15 subscribers. I just subbed. You can find it very easily. Just type that in. I think that's the channel. Is that the right channel? I that There is a channel with that name. So anyway. I don't need a gift card. I want my picture on your wall of fame. Then send it. Send me your picture, Shimei. Send me a nice picture and I'll get a frame or put it in a frame and I'll I will put it on the wall of fame. I would be happy to do that. Lori is taking care of her parents this summer. Dan and Mike are hanging out together, uh, getting his van worked on. All right. Very good. Lady trucker, I met you at the truck stop. Smart phone three. Well, thank you again, Senior Survival and Preparedness. That is your channel there. 15 subs, uh, S-H-T-F-E-D-C, Get Home Bag, and my S-H-T-F First Aid Kit. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, Ellen. 
That's right. If a nomadic fanatic wants to head back to Idaho, there's always a driveway for him to park in. <laughs> there's always. Hey, Daniel from Quebec, thank you so much. And there's the link to the channel. Yeah, Noreen just posted it. So go give uh, SS, SSP a, uh, a couple more subs there. I live in Toledo, but I love Cape Cod. You know, I've never been to Cape Cod. Again, I'm, I've never been to Massachusetts. Wow. She, does, she drives a Volvo. Oh, a Volvo truck. Wow. Smack. That's right. That's right. There's a driveway for you, Nomadic Fanatic or Camper Van Kevin. If you're up next time you're in Idaho, I'm not, I won't even give him the town name. <laughs> Sub to Lori's channel. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do that. P Town, baby. Nantucket is better. Yeah. Come visit Cape Cod, Dave. I will. Okay, I would love to do that, Ken. Hey, Maximus Minibus. That's right. She did a really good video uh, last year. I think it was on the whole history of Nantucket. She was out there for a while. It was fascinating stuff. Driving it. Oh, you're driving now up near the fl up near Flag Flagstaff. Wow. Yeah, my, my parents were mainly Jersey Beach people, you know, so I, you know, we'd always did the Jersey Shore and stuff like that. Wildwood, Cape May, Ocean City, New Jersey. Uh, yeah, you know, in fact, that Cape May is kind of my kind of unofficial hometown. That's where all the, the relatives are buried there in the, the cemetery there. So, uh, yeah, get me over 11K subs. That's right. If you haven't subbed to my channel... You know, I'm trying to get up to 11K, so hopefully this month sometime. We only need about 50 or 60 more subs, but uh, let's put, put, put Dave over the top. I'm trying to get 11K subs by the 4th of July. We're so close, and then we'll get uh, try to get 12 by Labor Day, so we'll see. <laughs> doesn't matter. Number of subs honestly doesn't really matter that much, but it'd be nice to kind of to do that. Cape May is really pretty. I like it. It's changed a lot though. It used to be more, it's become kind of like the Hamptons for Philadelphia. You know, the people, it's interesting to see like New Yorkers, they kind of go to the nor North Jersey beaches. I mean, North there's South Jersey. And then there's the Northern, you know, Asbury park that, that area there is where they tend to go. Then once you get Atlantic city, the beaches tend to be more for, for like Philadelphia people. Atlantic, because the Atlantic City Expressway comes down, and then you hit the Garden State Parkway. That seems to be more Philadelphia people come over, and then when you go across the bay into Delaware and Ocean City, Maryland, that's more of the DC Baltimore crowd. So it's kind of interesting. You get different crowds there, but Cape May kind of has gotten very exclusive and expensive. Um, you know, a lot of very beautiful Victorian houses there. A lot of very wealthy people are coming and staying there now, and it kind of has changed a lot. But it's still a nice place. The beaches there, Cape May too, are not the greatest because they get a lot of um, they get a lot of erosion. So they are constantly having to, you know, bring trucks of sand in and stuff like that because they're right on the southern tip of Jersey, and I guess the currents there are constantly washing their beaches away. But now you know. The most attractive female van dweller. I don't know, D. Redondo. Let's say it's a senior preparedness. <laughs> That's right. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Rhode Island has some nice beaches. Yeah, yeah. I used to get my parent. My grandparents lived in uh, Westchester County, New York, and they used to go over to Sherwood Island in Connecticut. I mean, that was fun. I mean, but it wasn't the greatest beach in the world. It was kind of rocky. It was like stony. It wasn't sandy. It was more like stones. But it was a nice place to camp out and, and you know, do a picnic or something. And the and the Long Island Sound, you don't get the big waves like you do in the ocean and stuff like that. Evie is the best. Evie Nova. <coughs> we haven't seen much of Evie. Yeah. 
We Jed posts maybe once a month when he's usually driving around on his bike or something. And we never get to see Evie anymore. Maybe, maybe in the background we'll get to see her. But she should just do a video one of these days and just update us on what's going on in her life, you know. Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Unstoppable Morgan is very pretty. She, she is. She is. Rhode Island beaches. I do. Our favorite Rhode Islander, of course, was Pam on the lamb. We haven't seen anything. Uh, she, I think she took her channel down, didn't she? Which is kind of crazy because, you know, I, you know, even if you're off the road, leave your content up. It's still fascinating. Dave now has the most so far people watching and nearly most money. Yeah, I think that's a one, one, one donation. And I think we've hit a record. I don't know. I can't remember another chat where I've gotten 400 bucks. One, yeah, yeah, we did have the, um, we did have the um, chat we did about two months ago where I got 16,000 people watching. Remember that? It's something weird happened. It was a Saturday morning chat back in May and it just started 200, 300, 500. I'm like, holy cow. And it was, we peaked out about 16,000. Incredible dunes. Yeah, yeah. My, fa my family goes to Long Beach Island, New Jersey, Ocean County. Beautiful beaches, yeah. New Jersey, you know, New Jersey gets trashed by a lot of people. It is a very pretty state. There are some very pretty parts of New Jersey, you know, the beaches and the mountains. You go up to the northern part of Jersey, and it's gorgeous up in there. And then you go down to the, the – they have some beautiful beaches there, beautiful beach towns. The Pine Barrens, they have their, maybe not, they're not classically beautiful with huge, majestic mountains, but it is a pretty place, you know? It, it's sandy and they have a lot of pine trees. Jersey is a pretty state. I mean, you know, it gets put down a lot and there are some, it's a very industrial state, a lot of highways, and the, the turnpike and all that. And North Jersey's got a lot of factories and stuff, but that's right. We had 16,000 that one day. Wasn't that crazy? You got bot botted. I did. I got botted that day, Jim Jones. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I was very popular that day. Yeah, I don't know. New Jersey has cheese steak. Yeah, I grew up in Jersey. My uh, my dad, uh, we lived there from like 1960 to 72. My dad worked in Philly and we lived over in the Jersey suburbs of South Jersey there. Uh, and ended up in West Effort Township. And I, I liked it. I liked it. It was you know, it was good and bad, but I, I have some very fond memories of growing up there. A lot of traffic circles. They had those diners that looked like train cars, and they were with that silver on those old train cars. They had a lot of diners and stuff like that. I, you know, good radio reception. You get really good radio reception in 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 Jersey. You know, South Jersey because of all the. Uh, you get, you're near the ocean and you've got really good, I don't know what it is about the sandy soil, but you get really good radio reception. The Philadelphia stations uh, can blast their signals to the east because there's nothing to interfere with once you get past Jersey. It's all open ocean. So all the stations in Philly would just, you know, all their signals are blasting over to Jersey because they don't interfere anybody. They can just, you know, what are they going to hit, Bermuda? So you get really good radio reception in South Jersey. The top three female van dwellers, Allie, TNA, Susie Cruz, and Kaylee, NM. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, nomadic movement? Yeah, I, I do. I'm enjoying, uh, I'm enjoying uh, Tritt and Allie these days, uh, Redondo. Uh, yeah, they, they're going to be building a house up there in the Utah mountains. And, and I noticed that Trent is starting to grow back his beard there. He shaved it off for the wedding there. <laughs> Almost unrecognizable. And I'm enjoying – I always like Nomadic Movement. Yeah, they have a good channel there down in Panama. The jug handles, yes. You can't make a left turn. If, they, if you want to make a left turn, most places you just pull up off into the left lane and make your left turn at the light. Jersey, you have to go through the intersection, and then you go around – to the right and then you come back around then you got to wait at the light again so two trips through the light and then you go back through to make that left turn which is confusing you're like you're telling somebody now make a left at the light but you have to make a right and go around the jug handle and then comes back through it's confusing to make give directions 
You know, most places, I've, you know, I've never been in another state that does that. You know, every other state is just get in the left lane, make a left turn, you know? I don't know. You know why, you know, you know why New York City doesn't just float away? Because New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought Staten Island should be part of New Jersey. It geographically looks like it's part of New Jersey. I don't, un, I don't know all the history of why New York got that, but, you know, it was kind of weird. Trent and Allie have enough of the old school value system. They will survive. Very nice couple. They very they do a very good job. Um, and they they check off all the right things in YouTube. They're doing you know they're they're uh, they're an adorable couple. They they do great videos. They're well edited. What do you say? And they bounced away from you know the pandemic. I think the pandemic really really kind of left a lot of nomads. Kind of some of them just kind of like whoa, what's going on? They just, you know, they got back to the States. They visited her parents in Washington, D.C. Then they went out to Utah, and now they, they're doing their channel really well they, without really missing a beat, you know? Olga's Diner. No. Where, is that New Jersey? You enjoy watching my videos when I'm driving. Yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> Everyone goes, I don't know. I, I'm going to do, try to do more hiking rants. Uh, the rant videos seem to do pretty well for some reason. When I do my rants, I get considerably more views than when I don't. So I don't know. That's right, Mark H. $400. Thanks again to Senior Survival and Preparedness. Man. I like nomadic movement. They're going to have a nice commune there. Russell Spade. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, bubble, bust, repeat. I enjoy doing the rant videos, but again, I got to have a topic. And lately, there have been a lot of good topics to talk about. You know, the pandemic with all the nomads getting houses and bases of operation. And I don't know. I just I have to be inspired. I can't like think, you know, I, OK, it's Tuesday. I'm going to do a rant. What am I going to talk about? If I got to do that, then forget the rant. If I, I got to be like. No, oh, I really need to get this off my chest, you know? Yeah. That is right. You're right. You're not seeing that was 400 bucks again. Senior survival and preparedness, Lori, female trucker. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's right. Now, see if anybody can match that. I went, I went, Rockford. Rockford's the matching guy. He comes on here and uh, matches things. Come on, Rockford. You need to match that. Deb, uh, asterisk. A lot of us are rooting for Unstoppable Morgan to make it through three-month dry out in the woods. She calls it rehab. I hope she does it okay. I have some friends that are pretty heavy drinkers, and it is dangerous, especially if you're a pretty heavy drinker, to uh, just stop drinking. You, you know, it, it, it's very dangerous. It's a, my sister is a nurse practitioner, and she says it's actually alcohol is one of the more dangerous drugs to just go cold turkey with. You know, sometimes even worse than some of the narcotics because – you know, even when you get off a narcotic, it makes you feel really sick. Whereas alcohol, I know James isn't here today. I don't know where he is. Maybe he's lurking. Uh, with alcohol, yeah, you can get, you know, you can have high blood pressure spikes. You can have seizures. It can be dangerous. And you really, 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 you know, if you're going to like, you know, if you're a heavy drinker and need to get off it, you really need to seek some medical advice. You really should to be safe. I've known friends that have done it on their own, but it's probably not a smart thing to do. My coworker's sister accidentally gave a $500 tip to a pizza place. I've heard of people doing that. I've heard of people doing that. Or maybe maybe she wrote 500 down and she didn't put the decimal point dark enough and they looked just saw oh, 500. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm always very careful about the tips because, yeah, they, you have that little tip line there. What I'll often do, actually, just I will like if I'm paying with a credit card, I don't put the tip on the card. I just pay the bill and then I'll get some cash out, throw that on the table. So, you know, if the tip is, you know, forty five dollars, I mean, the, the bill was forty five dollars. I just put forty five dollars, no tip. And then I'll throw, you know, six or seven bucks out on the table. I prefer doing that. Because, yeah, you know, if you don't write that tip in that little thing on the tiny little slip of paper, right, they could read it wrong. And then you suddenly get, whoa, Doxy, Doxy is definitely a Morgan O'Holic. Yeah. Where's Squeaky? That's right, Squeaky. Squeaky, where are you? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. 
Squeak is probably watching and going, oh my goodness, how do I match that? What do you define as heavy drinking, Daniel? I don't know. You know, go, you argue about that. Again, it depends on the person. It really does. Uh, alcohol affects men and women very differently from what I'm told. Women are much less tolerant to alcohol than men are. And then it also de defines how big you are. You know, if you're a large, heavy person or a smaller person, it, that can make a big difference too. Uh, and again, it depends on your genetics and stuff. Some people can handle it better than others, you know. I know guys that, that I know a guy and his girlfriend and they drank about the same amount of booze every day and he's still doing okay. And she passed away a couple of years ago with liver failure. So, you know, they both drank about the same, you know, but it just affects people different. She tipped them online. Ooh, I quit beer and Coke 30 days in jail rehab. Wow. Well, congratulations. You know, my, and my sister's had some issues with stuff like that. And she says, every day is a battle. You know, you don't get over it and then you're fine. It's not like getting over the virus where you are done with it. You feel better. And now you won't go on with the way your life was. It's, you have to fight it all the time. And, and a lot of people go through rehab multiple times. It's not uncommon. You know, you do three or four. I know a guy that did rehab and he was good for a year. And then he went right back to it, you know? So, you know, things can trip you back to, you know, it, it, it's very common to uh, fall off the wagon, so to speak. Seems like I remember you having a nice super chat total last week. Yes, we did. I did very well last week, but it wasn't $400. <laughs> B. Athens, I have developed an instant virus test. One drop of ghost pepper sauce on the tongue. If they don't start screaming, give the PCR test. I don't know. They say with this virus, people do tend to lose their sense of smell and taste. So I guess if you take some real hot pepper sauce and you can't taste it, you probably have the V, right? That's probably a good, you know, eat some jalapenos. And if it doesn't do anything to you, then you know you got it. I worked on a rehab unit for a while in between OR positions, NH Lieber says. What an eye opener. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know. You know, again, a lot of a lot of the problems with booze and stuff has to do with your genetics and stuff like that. It's very true. Uh, there was a very good. There's a very good interview Dick Van Dyke does on uh, the Dick Cavett show. It's on YouTube. Just talk Google Dick Van Dyke talks about alcoholism because he was quite a heavy drinker back when he was doing the Dick Van Dyke show there with Mary Tyler Moore, and he has some good thoughts on it. He really does. This this interview was shot like 40 years ago. Dick Dick Cavett. Remember Dick Cavett he used to have that show on ABC uh, up against Johnny Carson back in the 70s. Um, very interesting interview. He says that a lot of people, what? With Google's cutback in taxes, what is that? 28 bucks. I don't know. I don't know, man. I just um, thank you. so Again, thank you so much, Senior Survival and Prep. That was so nice of you. The world is a crazy place right now. You are absolutely right. I never thought a virus would potentially end the species. I always thought it would be a war, scary times. I, I, I am very much, you know, I've always thought, you know, that we always wonder why there isn't more like Star Trek. All these, all these, you know, why, where are all the other life forms in the universe, the intelligent life forms? Where are they? Are we the only one? You know, and uh, I kind of think that, what they develop before, and then you get to a certain point where you destroy yourself. I really think that humankind will eventually, one way or another, pull the plug, you know, whether it's going to be a nuclear war or whether it's going to be a virus. You know, the scary thing about this whole pandemic thing is what if this virus, I mean, this virus is not nice, but at least, you know, 95, more than that, 98%, 99% of the people that get it survive it, Okay. You know, I, I think there's a lot more people that have this virus that aren't even counted because they have a fairly mild version of it. But the vast majority of people that get this, like a flu, they survive it and they're fine. What if there's a virus that pops up in Wuhan, China sometime that uh, 
has re, you know, really has like an 80% fatality rate and there's nothing people can do about it. And it spreads all over the world in, in three months. That's really scary, you know? It doesn't give me a lot of faith in humanity. You know, I, I'm thinking, you know, how much longer? A couple hundred years, maybe. You know, again, we need to get off the planet because, uh, you know, if we want mankind to survive, we must get to Mars or somewhere, man, or the moon. Thank you, Deb. We develop biological. Yeah, it's very true, Sh Shadow King. Those are actually probably more scary than nuclear weapons, you know? The biological stuff, that's really scary. Did you hear Donnie Jr. girlfriend tested positive? Yes, I did see that King Pookie Nation. They've had quite a few people in the White, the press corps and on, on uh, the White House staff test positive. Yes. Yes, again, Thunderbird. Thank you very much to Senior Survival and Prep. That's right, that's 400. <laughs> You had someone off the what what did you have? I had someone off the chain in the ER yesterday. Good lord. Off the chain. What's that? James did what 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 what? James Rockford, thank you for the $20. Oh, oh, Rockford's here today. I, again, I can't see him. Thank you, Mr. Rockford. That's right. I was chatting with uh I was chatting with Destination Open Road on the phone the other day, and uh, yeah, where's the other 380? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Rockford is very generous. I'm just saying, you know, I'm sure if I added up all of his very generous donations over the last few months, he's been very kind. Okay, we're not going to – we're going – that's right. We're up to 420. Let's hit 500. Come on, Mikey. Doxy, was he? I thought I saw him. He, pa he, he passed out or something. I don't know. Yeah, he was here. He was giving a Jilly update earlier. I don't know. He's probably watching uh, Carolyn's RV life. He always likes that. <laughs> Betty. <laughs> Surgeons are abusive to staff back then, too. Hospitals. To oh, man. Yeah, well, the, the thing, Russell, we don't know is how many people get it and don't even get medical attention, and then they don't get counted. I think there's a lot of people. I, I really think the various rates, the infection rate is much higher than what we're seeing, and the actual fatality rate is much lower because a lot of people get it, and they kind of feel bad for a couple of days, and they don't get medical treatment, they don't get tested, and they just move on, and they spread it, you know? They're like, oh, I just got a sore throat, and I feel a little feverish, but I'm going to work and coughing on everybody, and it's why it's probably a good idea just to wear the damn masks, you know? What? <laughs> just the way... Yeah, I don't like alcohol, I just... I, yeah, I, except that tastes good, you know. Discuss ATW and Orlando. What about ATW and Orlando, Noreen? Um, Orlando Bloom? <laughs> Is Adam going to Orlando? I have not. I have not watched the last couple Adam the Woo videos. I think he's. You know. Wow, I've been working through the V, hauling TP all over the country. Thank you, Senior Survival and Preparedness. If you came to Morganton, yes, our uh, Walmart is now stocked back up with TP, which is very, that's a very important thing to do. Get the, get everybody's TP stocks back up. Yes, that was just crazy. Why people were hoarding toilet paper made no sense at all, you know? Again, Daniel, yeah, I you know, I think... They, I think they're useful in one particular thing, and that is if you are uh, contagious. If you are one of those many people that get the virus and don't know you have it and you're out there breathe, you know, I think that is a – I think the virus is good in that case of you spreading it to other people. How preventative it is, I don't think it's particularly – you know, I find that when I have a mask on, I'm constantly fiddling – I put it on. I take it off. I I got my hands now around my face a lot. I'm not saying I, – I really, you know, I just don't like to, you know, don't put your hands near your face. But I now have my hands near my face all the time. I put the mask in my pocket. I touch it with my hands. I put it on my face. I don't think it prevents 
the virus from, you know, if you don't have it getting it from someone else, eh, I don't think it does much good, but I think it does some good. If you have it, you're asymptomatic and you're spreading it, maybe you'll reduce the spread rate. Dave, I just did a super chat and gave you $5. Not sure you saw that. I didn't see that, Mr. Square Art. I didn't. I, all I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Let me see if I punch up the chat over here. Sometimes things show up uh, uh, over here that I can't see over there. Let's say, let's go to my, my channel. Let's see here. Let me check the chat over here, see what pops up. Let me check the chat. No, I don't see it. Mr. Square Art, I don't see it, but thank you so much. Does, did anybody else see that one? Do, do, do. Ba -do -do. Oh, there's the doxinator. Oh, the hotline. That's right. Oh, man, this, this hour has gone fast. <laughs> it's been a very fast hour. 571 419. Oh, I'm terrible with you. 0463. Oh, I think I got the right number this time. Probably some little old lady in Northern Virginia is getting uh, phone calls. I put the wrong number last week. And again, yeah, is it that inconvenient? I don't wear a mask full time. Again, like Eric, I'm not a fanatic. If I'm out hiking or away from other people, don't wear your mask in your trailer, in your home. That's fine. But just when you're in stores, go into the store, put the mask on, do your shopping, and then take it off. You know, I, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Now places are out of liquid. You're out of liquid soap, really. I do find I do find when I go to the Walmart, yeah, they don't have a lot of liquid soap, but I do find they usually have it. You say that most nomads are selfish people. The carpeted garage, um, they're no more selfish than the average person. Some are, some aren't. Uh, the yeah, we're getting a shortage of uh, paper towels now, according to Noreen, huh? I don't know. So, well, again, thank you, Mr. Square Art. Uh, Dave, are you hiring? I need a job, chauffeur, video production. <laughs> I'm looking, yeah, well, maybe I, I could use a new doximator. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's going to get mad if I say that. Don't be silly. Put on a rubber willy. <laughs> Temperamental surgeons, huh? I wear a seatbelt because there's proof it saved lives. There's no proof masks stop flu viruses. Yeah. Well, we don't know yet, okay? We're all still kind of figuring this situation out, right? I think if you look at a lot of the Asian countries, you look at Tokyo, you look in Beijing, you see an awful lot of people wearing masks. I think, you know, generally speaking, if you're out in public, it's probably makes things a little less contagious because you're putting up a barrier. OK, I don't know. You know, especially if you're contagious, if you've got a bad cough and you've got a cold, if you wear a mask and then you cough, it's less likely to get spread six feet you know, it's just, you know, but if you don't, if you're not contagious, um, you probably don't have a problem. You know, I don't know. Who knows? If they're asking you to do it, you know, at least here in North Carolina, if you're not wearing it, they're not making a big fuss. There are some places where they're, uh, you know, threatening people with like 400. I thought Los Angeles, if you don't wear a mask in L.A., you're getting like a $400 fine. According to NASA, what's happening at 1107 Eastern time? What's happening? What is that? What Mark H, what are you talking about? Falling into the light outer shadow of the earth's casts. Falling into the lighter outer shadow of the, that the earth casts. Really? Phenomenon will crawl over the Americans. Really? That's weird. You know, and again, I, you know, 
alcohol is a very good hand sanitizer and you can always go to your liquor store and get some, you know, those little bottles of cheap vodka are either like two, three bucks, you know, that'll do you for a while. You know, I don't know if they run out of the soap, just do some of that, you know, just a couple dabs of cheap vodka and you can even lick your fingers. <laughs> don't lick your fingers. That's not good to do. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I did get one of those big refill bottles. If you can find one of those refill bottles of hand soap, you know, then just stock that. And then, you know, you can fill up a lot of those little bottles when they get low. And I also mix, I mix, I don't use pure hand soap. I'll mix it with 50% water. You know, it, it makes a little more lubricant. I don't know. I do that. You saw a pic from 1918. Yeah. Everyone's wearing a mask. I love watching those old movies where they'll show like an old football game and everyone in the stadium has a suit and tie on. <laughs> All right, we got the phone line open if you want to call and say hello. 419, what is it? 571 4190 So uh, anybody wants to call on the hotline, you are welcome to do that. How much do I drink, Dave? I like to have a couple shots of vodka in the evening. Okay. I enjoy that. It makes it takes, it kind of calms me down. I'm a very hyper person. I buy the same soap. Yeah. I buy soft soap. I get that sometimes. I think it's called, I get that cheap stuff, whatever they, whatever that cheap, you know, off brand Walmart stuff is. It's like 79 cents for a little bottle. But then you can buy the refill bottles. The Redskins, yeah. Um, I yeah, I, I I don't have a problem. I never had a problem with the name Redskins, to be honest with you. I because they're, you know, this is it's a name for Indians, and I realize calling someone a red skin is probably a yellow neck or a yellow red neck or a yellow whatever. I don't know. It's probably not a good thing. Um, I would like them to keep red in the name, though, because it kind of shows their heritage. My vote is for Big Red Machine or Red – just call them the Red Machine, okay? The Red Machine. And they could have a big picture of a machine that's painted red. I want them to, I would like them to keep the red in the title. That's kind of their heritage. If they change their – and I really hope they don't go with a stupid Washington wonk name like Senators or the, the Congressman or the – politicians or the president, the, the Washington presidents. I hope they don't do that. I, I don't want that. You know, no, and the senators, because we used to have a baseball team. No, don't call them the senators. I think I would just call them the red machine, red machine. Keep, or, you know, the red birds, the red the, the commies. How about calling them the red men? There we go. Call them the red menace. And then, you know, can like commies, you know, a hammer and a sickle. Wouldn't that be good? The, the, the commies, the Washington commie red menace, <laughs> the red, red tide. There's a good one. The red tide. I just put red in the name, you know, bloody Mary, the, the bloody Marys, <laughs> the bloody, I don't know, something with red in the name. I, I like red machine. I just call it the red machine. King Pookie, you haven't been to work since March 17th. Wow. And again, it's 4th of July, right, right. TikTok app has been verified as a spy from China. Take it off your phone. Yeah, well, I've got a ZTE phone, so I, I know the Chinese government is spying on everything I do. <laughs> if you can read this mask, you are too close. How about getting masked where you can take a picture of yourself and then they'll put the, then they'll put the the mask. They'll put like your face, lower face on the mask. So you've got a mask on, but it's your it's your mouth and lower face on the mask. So you can actually look like yourself. How come somebody hasn't thought of that? You could buy some clinky honey flavored like Hobo Tech. Wow, I can't find rubbing alcohol. Hey, lazy days. So I'm currently using Smirnoff to kill the bed bugs. Well, Smirnoff, you don't need to buy the expensive vodka. Buy the cheap stuff, you know? Don't buy expensive vodka if you're just going to use it as a sanitizer. Go in and get that cheap <laughs> paint thinner version. 
The Red Tails, yeah, something with red in the name. I like the Red Menace. I like Red Machine, uh, you know, the commies, something like that. I think that would be funny. Don't pick a Washington Wonk name, uh, please. The Congressman, the, the Presidents, the, the Cabinet. Ugh. The word whitening will come off the toothpaste because some said it's racist. Is that true? Really? Are you serious? Brightening. I don't know. That's taking it a little too much. You know, I think taking that, I don't know. Oh, we got it. We got it. Restricted call. Mm. I usually don't take these. All right. I'm going to just very carefully take this one. Hello, restricted. Camo Dave channel. Hung up. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's see if he answers. The Washington losers. <laughs> the Washington weirdos. There we go. Maybe uh, they could get Chrome, you know. Weirdos unite. The Washington wonks. The Washington weirdos. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't want a health app on my phone. You know, sends a little message out to everybody. Oh, you have a fever. Everybody's going to avoid you. You know, they'll see you coming down the hall and run away, you know. Oh, my goodness. The swampers. Someone's calling from a prison. Yeah. <laughs> Linesku was surprisingly non-commentative on her, on her, his last one, which she was fairly crazy, but right, boom, bubble bust. I don't know. I get those all the time. I don't answer. I get I get restricted calls all the time. I'm not answering it. I don't answer restricted calls. You gotta. You know, you're out of luck. NFL is cutting their own throats. Most people are going to attend or watch anymore. And again, that's another thing about that YouTube TV up. They're raising the price fifteen dollars. Well, they have like twenty five sports channels on there, and all those sports channels are running old reruns and crap. So we're the pay we're paying for all these sports channels. They don't raise your rates. You know, we're paying all this money to these stupid networks like ESPN and Fox Sports, and they're not putting the baseball on. There's no baseball and football and college hoops and whatever to run. It's ridiculous. You know, just bad PR. Don't do it. Yeah, they said that. They're going to play two different songs now. Different national, quote, unofficial and official national anthems. I don't know, man. It's just getting a little, it is getting a little too crazy out there, isn't it? <sighs> Crotchy's bill, that's right. Crotchy's bill collectors. Crotchy has some puppet card debt. Is it really 82 degrees? I think you're reading that wrong. No, it's 76 in here. I think, yeah, it's it's on the, see, that's 80, and then we're like, no, wait, that's, I don't know. That is weird. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's 76. Are you legendary for making that one video about YouTube stream restrictions alone? Honey X. We got our football back in Australia with people in the stadiums. Well, maybe they could at least show some Australian football on some of the TV here. You got an ad yesterday that had the F word in it. Really? Boom, bubble, bust, repeat. That is weird. Not watch the NFL in years. Only take a knee when praying. Yeah. 1776. My philosophy, Americans don't kneel, okay? We don't kneel. We're, we don't do that. You know, the old the old days, it was like, oh, the British kneel because if the queen comes, you're supposed to bow and curtsy and kneel and whatever, the king. We're, Americans were all supposedly equal, okay? All men, and they mean women, they add asterisk, all men and women are created equal. We don't kneel to each other. We don't do that. That's my philosophy. It's, I'm not showing you disrespect by not kneeling. I just don't feel like Americans kneel. We are not a class system in this country. We are all technically, now we could say, well, we do technically have class systems here. 
unofficially, they're rich people and poor people, but we are theoretically all equal and we don't kneel for anybody and we don't take a knee. I don't, I don't, I, that bugs me. You know, we're supposed to kneel for certain people. No, no Americans do that. We don't kneel for anybody. That's just what I think, you know. I don't know. I was always brought, we, we know, and we, we don't kneel for the queen and we don't kneel for the king of Huchistan or whatever country is out there. We don't kneel. We don't curtsy and kneel and bow. That is showing submission. Americans, especially with other Americans, don't do that. You don't go to the president and bow and, you know, kiss his ring. We don't do that here, you know. That's why we fought the Revolutionary War. I don't know. I just people don't think, oh, we're now going to kneel for things. No, we don't we don't do that. Americans don't kneel. That's just what I think. But anyway. Dave, how do you feel about the Second Amendment? <laughs> Paul Barton. Why is people trying to track me, get me in? <laughs> Again, I, I I you know, if if you know, I'm not against hunting, I'm not against personal security, you know. You know, I'm a libertarian. Why do stupid people think they're so smart? Yeah, that's again the other that I that's the one thing I think that bothers me the most in politics is when somebody like pretends to know everything. I know everything and you know nothing. When they start saying that, I'm going. This is this uh, this conversation is done. You know. That's right, Papa Noel. We don't we don't take our flag and dip it at the Olympics. We don't kneel. We're Americans. We're equal. You know, you're the same as I am. Nobody, nobody, not even the president gets the kneeling treatment. Okay. We have a cart. Cartilla, Cartilla at six o'clock. People decorate their golf carts and parade through the development. Mark H. Really, very cool. Yeah. The Chinese amendments. What is the Chinese amendments? Yeah, and then and that's true. As you get older, right? You kneel and then you can't, oh, I can't get back up again. Oh, my knee is stuck. Oh, my, I dropped my 10 pound weight. Oh, I just dropped my, my 10 pound weight. That's right. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> oh man, I dropped my 10 pound weight and it fell on my toe. Now my toe hurts. I'm not answering restricted calls. I did and the person hung up. I, I, you want to call me? I got to, no restricted calls. Don't answer them. I'm kneeling and I can't get up. <laughs> Yes, I'm planning to do a 7 p.m. show tonight, and then we're going to have a sometime this evening around 9 or 10, I'm going to upload a little fireworks special. That's my plan for today. So, yeah. So we'll do the 7 p.m. show tonight. Uh, well, you know, it's not even going to be close to dark here at 7 o'clock. I don't think it gets dark here till almost 9 now, middle of the summer. I don't think the, they don't even have the um, – we don't even have the fireworks till like quarter of 10 or something like that. Oh, hey, oh, there he is. Doxinator has returned. He's back. My Walmart trip yesterday was very scary. We've never had a problem, but yesterday a small group was trying to start a fight by the door. Oh, no. Man. If I was in the Walmart the other day and some lady was having like a coughing spell in the next aisle. Have I watched the new Unsolved Mysteries on? Oh, Ziggy. I haven't watched you on Netflix lately. Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. How are you? I've been trying to reach you about Little Adam's warranty. Oh, and Little Adam's way beyond the warranty. But, but, but why do we get all these calls for that? When a car is obviously not going to be warrantyable. I know, I know it. Well, I guess they those rip off warranty companies. You know, I don't know how they do that. 
You know, they're almost all ripoff companies. The only reason they sell you those warranties is because they're going to make more money than you'll get out of it. You know, you're paying for repairs that never happened. I mean, at least pay for repairs when they happen, right? Yep. That's, that's what I think. You know, why should I have to pay for repairs that did, haven't happened? Oh, and then when something goes wrong with the car, there's always an exclusion, right? They always say, well, this isn't good. Didn't you read the fine print, that 82-page fine print thing we sent you? No, that's not covered. That's not covered. That's not covered. That's not covered. I remember I had a home warranty at my condo back in Reston, Virginia. And like I only used it once when my washer conked out. And they took uh, like a month and a half to get me a new washer. You know, is that – Oh, my God. And then the guys that brought the new washer wouldn't install it. You know, they just kind of brought it in and left it there. And I was like, wow, this is great. What a great warranty company. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it's like something breaks and then they might come back with, oh, that's a wearable item. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Or it's or it's uh, yeah, exactly right. You know, it, the, the warranties don't cover the brakes because they're right. They wear. Right. And they don't cover the tires. They don't cover this. They don't cover that. Exactly. There's always an exclusion. Yes. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminds me of back when Katrina happened in New Orleans and people are trying to get their insurance companies to pay for the repairs. And the insurance company is like, no, that's flood damage. And you have to have flood insurance for that. Exactly. And insurance companies are going, that's not flood. That's surge. I had that problem too on our old house. Uh, we had a, tropical storm and water was coming down from the gutter down the side of the house and then coming in the foundation and it flooded out part of a room and the insurance company said oh we don't cover water that comes in from any of the sides it has to come in from the ceiling that was in my plane and i was like what so water that come in the wall or the foundation was not covered but only water that came in from the ceiling it's just yeah there's always a technicality and Sorry, you're not covered. Ah, have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> insurance is not insurance. No, it really isn't. It's a big ripoff in many, many cases. And that's why it is so profitable because they take more money in than they ever pay out, you know? Yeah. I mean, even when you get down to something simple like workman's comp, it's like half the people I know that have ever had to go on workman's comp have had to sue to be able to get it. That's right, Mark. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous, isn't it? All right, Ziggy. Well, nice to hear from you. Are you still down there in Louisiana? I am still playing disc golf, still trying to motivate a big old behind to get off this chair and get the house ready to I set. Got, I got my disc golf set in the back of my car, and I it's just been so hot here, you know? I was, And they yeah. do see people playing it almost every day. I go into the park there, but it's just like, oh, it's like 95 degrees and high humidity, uh, you know, geez. I played yesterday and uh, I ended up winning the wet t-shirt contest on hole 15. Yay! <laughs> All right, Ziggy, you take care. Thanks for calling. Right. You bet. Bye. All righty, there's our call. The call of the day. Ziggy down there in Louisiana. That's right, Mark. I really do think, you know, a lot of, they always say that, you know, buy the warrant, the extended warranty. I was like, what, you know, some, what is it? Somebody, I was, I went into one store one day and bought like a $25 DVD player. And they said, you want to pay the $20 for the extended warranty? I'm like, really? On a $20 product? Come on. All right, everybody got to wrap it up here. We're almost at 11 o'clock and I don't want to go too long today. I want to really thank Senior Survival and Prep. That was so nice of you, Lori. $400 donation, still up there. That is amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you to Rockford. And thank you to Mr. Square Art, too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That does help. You know, YouTube income is, uh, it's, it gets lower and lower. You know, the, re the ad revenue that comes in on YouTube for everybody, it just, you know, even though your views are up or level, you know, that revenue just drops and uh, the PayPal's, the uh, the Super Chat money does really, really help. And if you enjoy my channel, I really appreciate that. You know, again, I'm not going to put anything behind a paywall. I really don't want to do that. I, you know, oh, go to my PayPal and watch the crotchy outtakes. I mean, go to my Patreon and watch the crotchy out. No, <laughs> just, I don't, my content is, you know, I, I'm a critical channel. 
but whatever. Noreen. I want to thank my mods here, Shemaine, Noreen, of course, the Doxy, who's kind of been kind of there, uh, and B in Athens. Nice to have you back, B. B was taking a little bit of time off of YouTube there, uh, but uh, she's doing well. I hear she's looking for a new place to live down in Athens. She's uh, been uh, in the real estate market for a possible new um, place. So uh, I hope I wish her all the best on that. She's got a couple kitty cats. She's adopted there and uh, she's doing well. That's right. I'm going to, I need to get 500. I need 20, 75 more dollars. Come on, Rockford. <laughs> Sarah, nice to see you. Boom, BBBR. Good channel there. I always enjoy watching Mr. BBBR. Boom, bubble, bust, repeat. Some really good stuff about the economy and real estate and all that. You ought to go meet Rosie next time she's in Vegas. Are you in Vegas now? Nomadic Dullard Insurance Company now selling on inspectors to see if you're maintaining your home. Really? I've never heard of that. Wow. The city here took down a statue of a waving cowboy. They claimed it needed repair. Really? People are ripping that. I don't know. I don't get, I don't get why people are ripping down Col Christopher Columbus statues. What are they going to change the name of Ohio's capital? I don't know, man. That's 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 taking it a little too far. Do you think George Washington, Thomas Jefferson? What next? <laughs> God. When's the next giveaway? That's a good question, Noreen. I'm I'm going to do something next week. I did mail the uh, package, the uh, Blockbuster shirt, to Mr. Lance up there in Ontario, so he should get it by midweek. Uh, probably, I think the delivery day was like the 6th, 7th, 8th, something like that. So that is on its way. I got some other stuff I do want to give away. We'll do something next week. I really haven't thought about it. All right. Yeah, Polly Petal, nice to see you here. Everybody, thank you so much. Vanilla Rain, are you going to Georgia Nomad? Then I am certainly going to try to get there. Yes, I. somebody sent me some pictures, some maps. Ah, oh, Spirit in the Sky Blue, thank you. Thank you so much. Spirit in the Sky Blue. That's a nice name. I like that. Well, thank you. Oh, are you happy 4th of July too? Strip, yeah. That's why well, they do that. The Russians always do that too. You know, they'll have the pictures of all the cosmonauts and then they erase one because he got out of line. They do that very much. What is that? Uh, Baldwin Bankrupt does that when he goes around these old Soviet towns and there's like where the statue used to be, the, the St Stalin statue used to be there and they took it down. And there's a lot of missing statues. That's very common in a lot of places, you know, take away all the statues. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Spirit in the sky blue. All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much for being here for Super Chat 4th of July 2020. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to be doing another chat at um, at um, 7 o'clock tonight. And then I got a special 4th of July uh, fireworks thing that's going to be uploaded probably sometime this evening later. So, yeah, there will be a 7 p.m. stream. But, again, Noreen, if you want to go out and watch the fireworks, you're more – but there won't be fireworks at 7 p.m. in North Carolina because it doesn't get dark till around 9. So, yeah, Mark, I know. Crazy world, isn't it? It's just a crazy world. Know the history. Just don't read the place marker. <laughs> All right, everybody. It's 11.01 Eastern time. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you at 7 o'clock tonight. Or uh, you all have a wonderful, safe 4th of July in this strange year, 2020. All right, everybody, vlog under.